جی ہیلو السلام علیکم وعلیکم السلام وعلیکم السلام السلام اوکے ان دا لاسٹ ٹو سیشنز professor de souza discussed some things which we will discuss briefly uh, again today so in the very first class <clears throat> by professor he discussed the vector space so vector space a non empty set with two operations vector addition and scalar multiplication satisfying certain properties for example vector addition is commutative x plus y equal to y plus x it is also associative x plus y plus z equal to x plus y plus z so you can put bracket anywhere you would like so you can add y and z first and then add x or you can add x and y first and then z the answer will be the same so in vector space there is a zero vector right so every vector added to the zero is equal to the vector and for every vector x there is another vector that is called minus of the vector if you add both answer is the zero vector and then some properties with respect to the scalar multiplication <clears throat> So alpha beta x equal to alpha beta x so you can put bracket anywhere so when it comes to a scalar multiplication this bracket does not matter and there is a scalar that is called one if you multiply that scalar with any vector the answer is the vector itself and then distributive laws scalar time sum of the vector is equal to sum of their scalar multiplication so alpha time x plus y equal to alpha x plus alpha y similarly 
distributive property with respect to the sum of the scalar. So alpha plus beta time x equal to alpha x plus beta x. So alpha, beta, gamma scalars are coming from the field. So you can consider any field, but in, in this course, we will consider the field of real numbers or the field of complex number. So, using the properties of scalar multiplication and vector addition, you can you can have these properties. So, if you multiply any vector with scalar zero, you will get a zero vector. <clears throat> or if you multiply any scalar with a zero vector, you will get the zero vector. And if you multiply minus one. with any vector, you will get the minus of the vector. So then you can go through these spaces, space R and we already have discussed this space. This is a Euclidean space. Every element is n tuple. So there are x is an element of R n that consists of n tuples, x i1, x i2 up to x i n. Y eta1, eta2 up to eta n. So how do you, so this is a vector space with the algebraic operation defined as, so you can add two n tuples. So x plus y is equal to x i1 plus eta1 up to so on x i n plus eta n. You can add the corresponding coordinates. So first tuple of x will be added to the first tuple of y and up to so on. Similarly, scalar multiplication. So you can multiply scalar alpha with x by multiplying alpha with every tuple xi1 up to xin. So similarly, space cn, <clears throat> it is a space of uh, n tuples of complex numbers. So ordered n tuples of complex numbers. <clears throat> so every tuple is a complex number. For example, x equal to xi1 up to xi n, each xi i is a complex number. <clears throat> Similarly, y So similarly, y is a <clears throat> order and tuple of complex numbers eta one up to eta n. So algebraic operations defined very similar to the algebraic operations we defined for Rn, x plus y, and alpha x. So then space of continuous functions defined on the interval a, b. So you can add two functions. So x plus y, sum of two functions is a function. And what is the definition of the function, sum of the function x plus y? It is defined at, at t by this formula. X, x plus y at t will be equal to x t plus y t. Alpha x is defined at t as alpha multiplied with x at t. So you can call it pointwise addition and pointwise scalar multiplication. So, so with, these op with these operations, vector addition, function addition, and scalar multiplication, CAB space of continuous functions defined on the interval AB. It is a vector space. So you can verify on your own all the properties of 
vector space are, are being satisfied. Similarly, just as a small exercise, you can show Rn and Cn are vector spaces. And then we have L2. You are familiar with L2 sequence spaces. So you can add two sequences by adding the corresponding terms of the sequence. So if you have a sequence xi1, xi2 up to so on, eta1, eta2 up to so on, so sum will be xi1 plus eta1 up to so on. Similarly, scalar multiplication. So L2 is also a vector space with these two operations. So other vector spaces you can you can consider L infinity space of bounded sequences Lp for p greater or equal to one less than infinite. So these are vector spaces. So maybe we need these definitions. A subspace of a vector space is a non-empty set, which itself is a vector space, satisfies all the properties of being vector space. Subspace of a vector space satisfies all the properties of being vector space. Under the same addition and scalar multiplication we have for x. And then there is a definition of linear combination. So we have a vector space x and vectors x1 of m. So linear combination is alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 up to alpha m x m where alpha 1 up to alpha m are, are scalars. So that is called a linear combination. So if we have a subset m of a vector space x, so if you collect a set of, if you collect all the linear combinations of vectors in the subset m, the set of all the linear combinations is called span of M. Span of M. So span of M is a subspace of X. You can prove that actually. You can consider proving it as a small exercise. It's extremely difficult. You must have studied linear algebra or calculus somewhere. So span M where m is a subset of x is a subspace of x. So subspace, the definition of subspace, it is a subset of a vector space. It is vector space under the same addition and scalar multiplication. Or alternatively, you can check if you consider any two elements from the subset, y, y1, y2, and if you consider the linear combination alpha y1 plus beta y2, so this belongs to y for all y1, y2, and for all scalars alpha, beta. So if this property is being satisfied, then y is a subspace. No need to check all the axioms of a vector space, just this one property. So similarly, you can check span of a subset of a vector space is a vector space. So then <laughs> linear independence of a set of vectors, for example, we have a set of vectors x1 up to xr in the subset M. So there are vectors x1 up to xr. Mm -hmm. So M consists of vectors X1 up to XR. And it is a subset of vector space X. So this subset M or the vectors X1 up to XR are linearly independent. If this equation alpha 1 X1 plus alpha 2 X2 plus up to so on equal to zero has only 
one solution for alpha one, alpha two, alpha R, that is zero. If alpha one x one plus alpha two x two plus up to so on alpha R x are equal to zero implies alpha one equal to alpha two equal to up to alpha R equal to zero. So then we say that x one, x two, x R are linearly independent or set M is linearly independent. So of course, if you will put alpha one, alpha two, alpha R equal to zero, the equation is being satisfied. So if these are the only values, alpha one equal to zero, alpha two equal to zero, alpha R equal to zero, for which this equation is being satisfied, then we say that x one, x two, x R are, are linearly independent vectors or the subset M consists of these vector is a linearly independent subset. So, uh, सर आवाज नहीं आ रही आवाज नहीं आ रही सर ऑफलाइन हो गए हैं सर का आई थिंक इंटरनेट प्रॉब्लम है सर लीव कर गए Okay, so in in vector space, <clears throat> in vector space x, so we can define the linearly independence of any arbitrary subset. So that subset can have it infinite many vectors in it, or maybe uncountably infinite vectors in it. So we can define, so what does it mean by linear independence of any arbitrary subset of a vector space? So we say that uh, any arbitrary subset M of X is linearly independent if every non-empty finite subset, every non-empty finite subset of M is linearly independent. So M is said to be linearly dependent if M is not linearly independent. So it is linearly independent if every non-empty finite subset of M is linearly independent. It is not linearly independent if every non-empty finite subset of M is not linearly independent. That means there exists some finite subset which is not linearly independent. So then, well, these are the things we will need. So you, you need to revise. If you do not know these preliminary notions, you can, you can revise from any book on linear algebra or from this one as well. So, let me call so we have finite and infinite dimensional vector spaces so a subset of a vector space is called basis if it is linearly independent 
and if it spans the whole space. So a vector space is finite dimensional. If there are finite many vectors in the basis of a vector space, So, or, or in other word, another way is, so a vector space is finite dimensional if there is a positive integer n such that x contains a linearly independent set of n vectors, whereas any set of n plus one or more vectors is linearly dependent. So, so x is finite dimensional and dimension of x is n if there are n vectors which are linearly independent. But if you consider any set of n plus one or more vectors, any set that is linearly dependent, then we say that x is finite dimensional and dimension of x is equal to n. So for example, Rn is a finite dimensional, Cn is a finite dimensional, right? CAB is not finite dimensional space of continuous functions. LP is not finite dimensional. And then this result, every vector space has a basis. So you don't need to worry about. So every vector space has a basis. And then a result about subspace. So X is finite dimensional then any proper subspace y of x has dimension which is less than n. Proper subspace y. That means there is at least one element in x which is not in y. So strictly less will be the dimension of y, strictly less than the dimension of x. So maybe you can consider some problems in this exercise, one, two, three, four, five, so as many as you can. Okay. <clears throat> so further, uh, one more thing. The notes sent by Professor D'Souza, chapter number So we will discuss some examples from those notes. So for example, examples of norm spaces. So consider the proof of, so prove that those spaces are vector spaces. So I will not do that in this lecture. So you can do at home. Okay. So these are the routine exercises. You can prove easily that those are the vector spaces. So norm, you already know norm. Norm is a function that is defined on the vector space. So let X be a vector space.
so define norm on x such that so a function is a norm on x if it satisfies these properties for all x belong to x. And the other property is so norm of x is equal to zero if and only if the vector is equal to zero vector. And uh, alpha time x has norm which is equal to absolute value of alpha time norm of x. So for all alpha from field and x belong to x. And then we have the triangle inequality x plus y x norm plus y norm for all x y in x. So these properties uh, must be satisfied before we call the function norm. So every norm, so we can define a metric with the help of a norm. So normally we call it norm space. So we denote, we use this notation to represent norm space. X is a vector space and this function is a norm on X. So this ordered pair is called norm space. So define D So if we have X is a norm space, so we can define DXY is equal to X minus Y for all X, Y belong to X. So if we, every norm space is a metric space, and you can define metric as this formula. So not every metric uh, is in, so metric, you can call it metric induced by the norm. So you can, not every metric is induced by norm. So every norm induces a metric, but not every metric is induced by some norm. So for example, let me show you. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So can you give me an example of a metric space which is not induced by norm? Sir, discrete metric space. Okay. Yeah. 
why do you think this create metric space is not induced by no? Sir, because norm space होने के लिए vector space की condition होती है and I think जो discrete metric space होती है वो vector space नहीं होती इसलिए जो discrete metric होती है वो vector space नहीं होती ये कौन sorry say again हेलो हेलो यस सर जी अभी कोई बता रहा था सॉरी क्या नाम था अभी जो बात करी सर वो बता रही थी कि एक बेस क्रीम स्पेस जो है वो इंड्यूस में इंड्यूस नहीं होती इंड्यूस नॉर्म नहीं होती क्योंकि वो वेक्टर स्पेस की कुछ प्रॉपर्टीज को फुलफिल नहीं सो लेट एक्स बी वेक्टर स्पेस सो यू कैन कंसीडर एक्स इक्वल टू आर ना एंड डिफाइन डी एक्स वाई इक्वल टू वन एक्स नॉट इक्वल टू वाई जीरो इफ एक्स इक्वल टू वाई तो बट आर इज अक्टर स्पेस right so r is a vector space yes sir so so metric space is not on not induced by norm space so if you have defined metric on 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 a non empty set which is not a vector space okay fine but if it is a vector space so can it uh, be induced by any norm so x equal to r is a vector space so can it, this discrete metric on r be induced by norm so a sufficient condition keh sakte hain but necessary condition nahi keh sakte isko i think baki aap clear kar dein hmm sufficient condition what is sufficient condition can you explain so uh let me show you something okay uh, so these are the examples you need to work out to show that these are norm spaces so for example i will come back to to this point discrete metric whether it is induced by norm or not so euclidean space rn so every ordered n tuple we can define a norm by considering the absolute value of and then square of every tuple and then square root so similarly we can define norm on cn so these are norm spaces so you can prove easily so dxy can be defined x minus y norm right? similarly you can define norm on space lp so x is a sequence So x norm is equal to x is a sequence which is equal to x i x i j. So x is a sequence which is equal to x i one. Xi two up to so on. So you can define norm by this formula. So the metric induced by this norm is equal to this one. So this is a metric we. Consider in chapter number one. So similarly, L infinity is a norm space. So.
तो x is a sequence x i one x i two up to so on norm you can define this way metric induced by the norm is this one similarly you have bell infinity you can define norm but x is a sequence bounded sequence l infinity is, is the space of all bounded sequences so norm of a bounded sequence is the supremum of absolute value of x i so you can consider the absolute value of each term of the sequence and consider a supremum so it exists because it is a bounded sequence similarly we have cab space of continuous functions so norm is defined by this formula maximum of x t t belong to j j is the interval ab okay so so this lemma provides a criteria so if a metric d is induced by a norm on a norm space x then this metric satisfies these two properties so distance between x plus a and y plus a so a is any so x y and a are any vectors in x and the alpha is any scalar so if you translate x and y using the vector a the distance remains invariant so distance between x plus a and y plus a is same as distance between x y the other property is distance between alpha time x and distance between alpha time y is equal to alpha mod dxy so if these two properties are being satisfied so these two properties that is are satisfied by the metric induced by norm so if a metric is induced by norm then these two properties are being satisfied in other words if these two properties are not being satisfied then the metric is not induced by norm so somebody was saying that it is sufficient so let me describe what this mean so we have this implication p implies q so p is sufficient for q or q is necessary for q so this is the language we use so here in the lemma if a metric if metric d induced by a norm on a norm space x then it satisfies x plus a y plus a equal to dx y and d alpha time x alpha time y equal to alpha absolute value time dx y so for all x y a in x and scalar alpha right so remember if metric d is induced by norm 
So it is sufficient for these two properties. So these two properties are being satisfied. <clears throat> So these two properties are necessary for a metric D in this by norm. So P implies Q. So we have something in the form of P implies Q. So P implies Q has equivalent form, not Q implies not P. So for example, if these two properties are not being, both are not being satisfied, then we say that metric is not induced by norm. So if you check the metric, whether it is induced by a norm or not, so you, you can check these two properties. Because if there is a, any metric which is induced by norm, that will satisfy these two properties. So if these two properties are not being satisfied, then the metric is not induced by norm. So for example, the metric, this metric sequence space S, remember the space S, so it is a vector space. S is a vector space. It is a sequence space. Sequences can be bounded or unbounded. We define the metric dxy by this formula, it is not, a, it does not satisfy those two properties. It does not. So how to show that this metric D does not satisfy those two properties? So you can assume two sequences. So it's I, I and eta I and show that those two properties are not being satisfied. So especially the second one, when you multiply it with alpha, right? So that property won't be satisfied. So you can consider with this metric, yes? Sir, hermetic space vector space hoti hai? Metric space uh, is a non-empty set. So we have a structure on the non-empty set. So that structure tells us how to find the distance between two elements, right? So if on a non-empty set X, on a non-empty set X, we can have a distance structure, we can have a distance function, but that non-empty set might not be a vector space. So for vector space, you need other operation, vector addition and scalar multiplication. So there can be a metric space, which is not a vector space. There is no vector addition or scalar multiplication, but there is a distance. So, sir, if there is a metric space, so metric induced by norm, then we have to say that we have to say that we have to say that So, Norm space ke liye you need a vector space. So you define norm on a vector space. Right? So here we are talking about okay, there are metrics, metric which are defined on the vector spaces. So you can define a metric on any non-empty set. It can be a vector space if, and it cannot be a vector space, whatever it is, vector space or not. So you can always define a distance. So it can be a metric space. So metric space defined on the vector space, metric defined on the vector space. So this metric is defined on the vector space. So it is not induced by any norm. 
So we will not talk about the metric induced by a norm, which is which is not a vector space. So keep it aside, right? So we are talking about the metric which are defined on the vector space. And those metrics are not induced by a norm if they do not satisfy these two properties. Okay, so got it. The metric uh, is more general structure. I mean, uh, I like the example given by Professor D'Souza in his lecture last time. Maybe. So in metric space, you have a you have a structure of a house. So nothing inside. So no bed, nothing. So in norm space, you have more, more, more property. You have the distance function as well, but you have much more inside. So. So this sequence space, uh, for example, you can consider this sequence space is I, I, one, zero, zero, up to so on. And eta I is equal to maybe two, zero, zero, up to so on. And then you can consider alpha equal to scalar three, and then check whether this property holds true or not. E alpha X alpha Y, X is this one, Y is this one, whether it is equal to alpha mod, dx, y or not. So you can find many examples to show that uh, this dx, y by this formula, this sequence space is not a metric in this norm because it does not satisfy both properties. Maybe it satisfy one property, but it does not satisfy both properties. So now uh, come to the discrete metric uh, space, like uh, if we have x equal to r and uh, distance, r is a vector space. So dx, y distance is defined by zero if x equal to y distance is equal to one if x is not equal to y. So is it a, a metric induced by norm or not? Somebody said no. So, but the reason is not the right uh, that it is not vector, it is a vector space, R is a vector space. So, but let's check, for example, the second property. For example, if alpha is equal to three, and X is not equal to Y, then distance between three x three y is equal to one. But alpha time dx y is equal to three time dx y, which is equal to three. So both are not equal. So d three x three y is not equal to three mod dx y. So second property is not being satisfied. So it is a metric which is not induced by any norm. So there are some more problems you can find in, in the exercise. So this lemma is very simple, right? A proof you can see one line proof. So dx plus a, y plus a, because d is induced by a norm, so that is equal to x plus a minus y plus a. So this will be equal to x minus y norm, which is dxy. Second property, d alpha x alpha y is equal to norm of alpha x minus alpha y is equal to using the property of norm alpha mod x minus y norm, which is equal to alpha mod dxy. So you can check you know, some problems in this. Okay, so this Consider this question number six, for example. Okay. 
So consider set of all ordered pairs, xi1, xi2, eta1, eta2. So you can define them norm, one norm, two norm, infinite norm. So show that these are norms. So x, one norm, two norm, infinite norm, satisfies the properties of being norm. One to four properties we discussed for a function to be norm. So you can check this. Similarly, you can extend it uh, to, to the vector space of ordered intervals of numbers. So one norm, p norm, infinite norm. So if you put p equal to two, you will get two norm. These are the, so our space, vector space of order intervals with these norm is a norm space with each one norm, p norm and infinite norm. So, so you can, that is the definition of a unit sphere unit sphere in a vector space. So unit sphere in a vector space is a set of those vectors whose norm is equal to one. So you can consider, you can consider the set of ordered, ordered pairs and you can consider the unit sphere with respect to one norm, two norm, three norm, four norm, infinite norm. So you can plot the unit sphere in R square in plane. It's a very simple case. So you will see that you will get different shapes of, of the unit sphere. You get square, you get circle, you get rectangle. So Geometry depends on the norm of the unit sphere in R square. So then read this convex set in a vector space. Right? And uh, we'll discuss some more exercises in the next session. Hopefully in this week I will conduct one one more session. Maybe along with Professor D'Souza, the problem solving session for the lecture. Mm -hmm. So question number 14 was the question we were talking about before. So metric induced by norm. So D tilde is a metric which is, D is a metric and D tilde is another metric which is defined with the help of the metric D. Show that D cannot be a, D cannot be obtained from a norm, D tilde. So you can check, uh, you can consider vector space X, you can consider X equal to R, you can consider some elements X, Y, you can consider alpha, you can consider those two properties for particular value of alpha and x, y, you will see that those properties are not being satisfied. So which are being satisfied for a metric induced by n norm. Okay, so few more notions uh, in this section two. So, so, so one more fact the norm is continuous.
the mount is a continuous function defined on a vector space. And you can prove that mount is continuous using the triangle inequality in two. So triangle inequality y norm minus x norm, absolute value of y norm minus x norm is less or equal to y minus x norm. So using this triangle inequality, we can easily prove that the norm is continuous function. G, can you prove? Sir, you proof Kurt answer. So, sir. Yes. So, f of x equal to x norm, right? So, x belong to, for all x belong to x, where vector space and uh, norm on x. So if you define this function fx by this norm function, this function is continuous function. So you can pick x naught belong to x. So we can show that f is continuous at x naught. So f is continuous at x naught if for every epsilon There is delta of positive number such that x minus x naught implies f of x minus f of x naught less than epsilon. So that is the definition of continuity. So you can start for any given epsilon you can choose delta equal to epsilon, right? Such that we have f of x minus f of x naught absolute value that is equal to x norm minus x naught norm. And uh, this is less or equal to x minus x norm by the triangle inequality and this is less than delta and delta is equal to epsilon. So that means for any epsilon there is this delta positive such that this property is being called true.
So you can write in the next line, right? So if x minus x not mom less than delta, then from this one f of x minus f of x not mom. Less than delta, which is equal to epsilon. So this implies that f is continuous. X so x naught is arbitrary fixed vector in x. So norm is a continuous function. On x. So, just like uh, complete uh, metric space, we have complete norm space, which is called the Banach space. So, complete <coughs> norm space in which every Cauchy sequence is convergent. So, what is a Cauchy sequence in a norm space? A sequence Xn in a norm space X is Cauchy if for every epsilon there is natural number n such that x and minus x and norm less than epsilon for all m greater than the natural number. So the convergence if limit norm x and minus x is equal to zero, then we say that the sequence x and in the norm space converges to x. So then a subspace y of a Banach space x is complete if and only if the set y is closed in x. So this is very similar to the result. We did for the metric space. So for a subspace in metric space. So if we have a complete metric space, then the subspace is complete itself complete if and only it is closed in the metric space. So that is an analogous result of that result. So you can prove this easily on the very similar lines. So you have a Banach space, that means you have a complete norm, complete metric space, the metric induced by the norm. So Try to prove it, try to write the proof, just following the proof of the analogous result in the section metric space. So then we have infinite series. So the most, one of the most important thing about Banach spaces, theory of Banach spaces is that you can do calculus in Banach spaces. Metric space, there is not much room to do many things, but in Banach spaces, you can. You can do many things which you have been doing in calculus. Like in calculus, we have the concept of infinite series. So in vector space, we can define a series. We can add two vectors. We can add more than two vectors. So we can define infinite series actually. So, if xk is a sequence in a norm space, we can associate a partial sum. So Sn equal to x1 plus x2 plus xn. Partial sum, if you add one term of the sequence, that is S1. If you add first two terms, that is S2. Sum of first 10 term is Sn. It is a sequence of partial sum. So if this sequence of partial sum so we know what does it mean by convergence of a sequence in norm space. Sn is a sequence. So if it converges to some vector in norm space, Sn converges to S. So then we say that the infinite series x1 plus x2 up to so on 
converges to that vector S. Sn is a sequence of partial sum that converges to S. That if Sn sequence of partial sum converges, then we say that infinite series is convergent and the sum is equal to the vector S, which is the limit of the sequence of partial sum. So then last time I remember Professor D'Souza discussed with you the absolute convergence. So if the series of infinite series of the, the infinite series that is constructed by adding the norm of the terms of the sequence, x1 norm plus x2 norm plus x3 norm up to four. So, if this sequence converge, series converge, so series of norm, then we say that series two converges absolutely. So we have this series x i i from one to infinite so converges absolutely if summation x i norm i from one to infinite converges So absolute convergence implies convergence. So in calculus, where we consider the sequence and series of real numbers, complex numbers. So we will prove that series converges absolutely. So we will say that it is convergent. The series is convergent if it converges absolutely. But here we, in that case, R is complete norm space, right? So, in vector spaces, norm spaces, we will say that absolute convergence implies convergence if and only if the Space is complete. So X is one of space. <clears throat> so if X is one of space, <clears throat> then absolute convergence implies convergence. So you have the result what you have in calculus, so you have in one of spaces. The same result. <clears throat> so absolute convergence implies convergence. Using the concept of series, so we can define a shoulder basis for X. So E1, E2, EN is a sequence in bound space. So if for every X, there exists a scalar such that X minus alpha 1, E1 plus alpha N, this converges to zero as n approaches to infinity. Then we say that the set E1, E2, up to so on is a shorter basis for x. If it, if the limit exists in three for every x, for every x in the norm space. So in that case, we can represent x as a linear combination of the basis vector, shorter basis vectors E1, E2, up to n. So this, these bases are called shoulder bases. So you can represent a, a vector in the norm space as a linear combination of the basis vector, shoulder basis vector. So 
12p has shoulder basis namely en so e1 is the one at the first place e2 is this one as the at the second place up to so on rest zero so e3 one at the third place rest component are zero so e1 e2 e3 up to so on so these form the shoulder basis for So we'll study, you know, what separable. Separable metric space. So if there is a countable dense subset, then the space is separable. So if X has a shoulder basis, then X is separable. So the converse, so, it, so one of the important question in mathematics is to study the converse of the statement. So if X has a shorter basis, then X is separable. So what about if X is separable? So what about, so does every separable Banach space have a shorter basis? So the answer is no. Maybe we'll come back to this separability later in some stages. We'll discuss this. So, in the section of metric spaces, we discussed uh, the completion. So, similarly, so like uh, in that section, we discussed every metric space has a completion. Hmm. Means that for every metric space, there is another metric space. For every metric space X, there is another metric space X tilde, such that X tilde has a dense subspace, which is isometric to the metric space X. And uh, X tilde is complete. So up to isometry, every metric space has a completion. Similarly, every norm space has a completion. So isometry in metric space that preserves the distance. This proof is an so, so you can use the theorem 1.6.2, the previous section, to show that one of space has a completion. But there is something in the world that uh, like a uh, norm space has a structure of a vector space, vector addition and scalar multiplication. So you can transport, uh, you can define a vector addition and scalar multiplication on the completion as well. So, so vector addition and scalar multiplication is compatible with this completion theorem. So you can just read it. So let me discuss something from Sir, you both me as Ajka lecture to be the revision current to which is a body. Sir, it to net disturbance creates in a cuff set a point unclear and put it to what happened to your internet. 
سر آواز بار بار ڈراپ ہو رہی So, okay, you can have a break for five minutes. So, we'll discuss after. Sir, a break. I can have a mask at time. Okay, sir. کتنے بجے ہوتا ہے نماز کا ٹائم سر سوا پانچ سر ہمارے پاس پانچ بجے ہے سر آپ نے کہا تھا کہ نیکسٹ لیکچر میں ہم کورس کر کورس ڈیفائن کر لیں گے مڈ کے لیے مڈ ٹرم ایگزام کے لیے جو ہوگا کورس ڈسکس کر لیں گے ٹھیک ہے اوکے اوکے پانچ منٹ کی بریک لے لیں ٹھیک discuss cartoon course so we have a break Thank of five minutes
जी हेलो हेलो
So, uh, from example 2.15 to onward. So, I will, I already have shared this document with you. Even, you can consider ex some example 2.14 as well. Example 2.13. Okay, so from example 2.10 to onward, you need to work out each and every example. So this is your assignment number one. Sir, end kahan pe hogi? And Hogi example 2.23. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. So, assignment number one. So, due by how much time do you need? I think it is very small assignment uh, you can do in one day or two days. So, Sir, करना क्या है? थोड़ा समझ नहीं आया. So due by April twenty-six. Yes, sir. Eleven p.m. No, no, sir. Thirty. Sorry, say again. So upload on LMS. So I will create a folder with this name assignment. Okay, sir. Sir, I'm made cups alone. So, uh, pe karna so, 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 so let A be the space of analytic functions defined on the unit disk B. So, so A is a set of space of analytic functions. So you can define in the unit disk D. So first you need to prove that it is vector space, the space of analytic functions. So in the unit disk D. And then this is a formula for the norm of and any vector in this space, you need to show that this space of analytic function with this norm is a norm space, norm vector space. Yeah, okay. So, okay. detail given. So, you need to work it out. So, example 2.23 or example, for example, in that course. In complex analysis, you study sum of two analytic functions is analytic. So if you multiply analytic function by a scalar, it is analytic function, right? So you need to justify that this space is a vector space with these two operations, vector additions and scalar multiplication. And then you will prove that the norm given by this formula satisfies those four properties that norm of any vector is greater or equal to zero 
norm equal to zero if and only if the vector is equal to zero. Okay, this is assignment number one. Should be submitted by April 26. So in the folder on LMS in your course. So example. So let me repeat example. 2.10 to 2.23. So prove that the spaces are normed vector space. So first you need to prove that the given spaces are vector spaces. Then the norm defined on those vector spaces satisfies the properties of norms as well. Sir, can you tell us about the midterm exam of functionals? Hmm. Midterm exam. When because Dr. We... Azizu Rahman is going to take a midterm exam on 27th of the April. Mm -hmm. And what's about you? Okay, so tell me when should we do the midterm exam? Then can we do it? So, can we do the midterm exam on Monday, May 3? Yes, sir, it would be easy for us because on 27th we have already an exam. So do you know the week number? Uh, sir, it, please it discuss the syllabus. So is it the week number 8? Yes, sir, yeah, try week. Eh? Or from 9th week, 10th. So. When can we do the midterm exam if it is not on May 3? So, can we do on May 10? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So I think uh, May 10 is fine. Sir, how much our syllabus will be done in 10 May? How much will you study on May 3? Sir, you have said in the first class that I will give you a project for you to explore it. Sir, you can also give us time so that we can explore it. Okay, I have to give you a time so that we can explore it. Okay. So, midterm exam. Yes, sir. हमारे अभी तक कोई भी assessment नहीं हुई. एक कोई है बस quiz one. Quiz one और assignment one. आज ये भी आपको ठीक है. और quiz two will be on that. So that is due on 26 May. Uh, quiz 2 will be so can, can you do the quiz on Sunday? Yes, sir. I will upload the quiz. So I will give you maybe three to four hours so you can upload the solution. So can you do it on Sunday? Sir, up me here. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. So, quiz two uh, will be on. Let me. Sir, we have two questions. Quiz two. Twenty five.
but the quiz two will be on Sunday. May two. Right. So quiz two syllabus will be chapter one. Chapter two. So the content will we will discuss by twenty-six April Monday. So next week that we can be hand need for our that will be the syllabus for this Monday. सर दस मई को छुट्टी आ रही है दस मई को किस चीज की छुट्टी सर ईद की छुट्टी आ रही है ईद दस मई को ईद है सर दस से पहले ले लें सर दस से पहले ले लें सर थ्री मई बेस्ट है दस मई को छुट्टी कैसे हो सकती है सर वो पूरा वीक छुट्टी दी हुई है ने मंडे से लेकर सटरडे तक जिसके अंदर ईद भी है सो दस मई को छुट्टी है सर आप एट को ले लें हाँ किसी और दिन भी तो ले सकते हैं सर फर्स्ट में एक को भी तो ले सकते हैं छुट्टी है सर मैं एक के फर्स्ट वीक में लेने बाद में मैं घर जाना है ठीक है सो मे थ्री को होगा मिट्टो यस सर ओके सर सर ओके सर ओके सर थैंक यू ओके So this is section two point four, finite dimensional noise spaces and subspaces. So two point four point one lemma is linear combination lemma. It's a very important lemma. This lemma is used in many results on finite dimensional noise spaces. So what does it say? X1, X2 up to X n, they are linearly independent set of vectors in the noise space X. So, okay, noise space X of any dimension, X1 up to X n is a finite set of linearly independent vectors. So, in the noise space X with any dimension. Then there is a number c, positive number c, 
such that for every choice of scalars alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha n, we have the norm of the linear combination of alpha 1 x1 plus up to so on plus x alpha and x n. The norm is greater or equal to c time the sum of the absolute values of alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha n. So, linear combination lemma. So for every choice of scalar, that means for every linear combination of the vector x1, x2 up to xn. So we have the inequality one. Hold true for some positive real number c. So the next result, so maybe I can discuss, uh, I will discuss the proof of this lemma in the next class. So in the next session, we can discuss the proof of this linear combination lemma. And uh, uh, one result in the next section 2.5, Ray's lemma, and a couple of related results. So in the next class, I will discuss the proof of this lemma, linear combination lemma, and the Ries lemma with some couple of more results before we start the linear operator. So then there will be one or two lectures on linear operators before we move to the next. So this lemma, has many applications in linear combination. So every finite dimensional subspace Y of a norm space is complete. So using this lemma, we can prove that every finite dimensional subspace Y of a norm space X is complete. So that means every finite dimensional norm space is complete. In particular, If you put y equal to x, you get every finite dimensional norm space is complete. So you need to read this, this proof. So I will not discuss this proof of theorem 2.4.2. So you need to prove that finite dimensional subspace y is complete. So you will consider an arbitrary Cauchy sequence in Y and you will prove that it converges in Y. So using this lemma, you can prove it. So this lemma actually provides the opportunity to so, so finite dimensional norm spaces are very similar to what you have finite dimensional Euclidean space. So alpha one, alpha two, alpha n are scalars. So you can use the Euclidean space and the results in Euclidean space to prove these results. So in each result, you will apply this lemma. So every finite dimensional norm space is complete. You can do it using this line. Just read it. So it's your reading assignment. 2.4.2. 2.4.3, every finite dimensional subspace where the norm space is closed. Remember, in Mickey space, we have uh, Mickey space is complete. Then a subspace is complete if and only if it is closed. So using that and the previous result, you can show that every finite dimensional subspace for a non-space is closed. 
uh, it is a corollary of the above result and that result in the case basis about the completeness of the subspace. Then 2.4.4 so is about the equivalent norms. So we have two norms on our non empty set X. So let me show. Let me write. So if we have a non empty set X, So that X P non empty. That X P a vector space. with norms one and two. The norms one and two norm are equivalent if there are scalars alpha beta such that alpha is greater than zero beta is greater than zero these are positive scalars satisfying this alpha time one norm less than two norms lesser equal to beta time one for all x in x. So then we say that uh, these two norms are equivalent. If there exists a scalar result of positive scalar result. So you using the linear combination gamma, we can prove that so, very important result. So on a finite dimensional vector spaces, any two norms are equivalent. Any two norms are equivalent on a finite dimension vector spaces. So if you look at question number three and four, three show that definition two point four point four, that is the definition of equivalent norms in the space The axioms of equivalence relations hold. So equivalence relation is a relation that is transitive, symmetric and reflexive. So, 
so you can consider the relation on the norms norms on a vector space so you have a set of norms and uh, you define the relation one norm is equivalent to another one so every norm is equivalent to itself so if uh, norm 1 is equivalent to norm 2 norm 2 is equivalent to norm 1 if norm 1 is equivalent to norm 2 norm 2 is equivalent to norm 3 then norm 1 is equivalent to norm 3 so using the definition of equivalent norm you can prove easily that this relation is an equivalence relation so question number 4 maybe i will solve this question for show that the equivalent norms on a vector space x induce the same topology so you have a norm space you have the norm space x norm with respect to norm 1 x with respect to norm 2 so topology is same that means if a set is open in one topology it is open in the other one if and only so they both induce the same topology they both generate the same topology, both norm spaces, if they are equivalent. So many other properties are being shared by the equivalent norms. For example, if two norms are equivalent, then the Cauchy sequence are the same. If one sequence is Cauchy in one norm with respect to one norm, it is Cauchy with respect to the other. So if a sequence is convergent in one norm, it is convergent in the other one. So many other properties are same for the equivalent norms. So in this so try to solve the problem in this direction as many as we can. So I will discuss I will, I will try to have a session, couple of sessions before the midterm exam about problem solving. Because in the exam there will be problems. The proofs, the theorems which we will discuss in the class. So I will not give those proofs. I will not give those statements to prove in the exam, which we did in the class or which we are already proved in the book. So the midterm exam will consist of problems. So like uh, problems like the problems in these sections, examples and uh, the problems in the assignment. So maybe I will, I will try to upload the document. So Jitami 2.3. Five section ki kuch cheeze hum abhi padhenge 2.4 or 5 ki next class mein bhi. So kuch problems mein aapko likhunga practice ke liye. Jo midterm exam ke liye you can practice. So the problems I will mention with respect to each and every section. So question number 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can consider those problems for the practice. For you, midterm exam. That will be uploaded on LMS, or maybe I will try to send you via email as well. So, okay. Uh, that is all for today's lecture. If you have any question, you can ask any question for me. Sir, topics so when I will uh, write the problems like so I will mention the section one section two or section 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. .1 so those sections are included. So the things we have discussed in that, you can consider the certain sections. Okay, sir. Uh, 
सर हमारे सेकंड क्विज का सिलेबस क्या है सेकंड क्विज का सिलेबस है मतलब वेक्टर स्पेसेस और नॉन स्पेसेस एंड सर व्हाट वुड बी द टाइम ऑफ द क्विज टाइम ऑफ द क्विज विल बी okay let me check what time of the quiz sunday may to so quiz will be available from then in to Two thirty p.m. on Sunday. Okay. Sir. So I will upload these slides. So I will write the questions in this document. So. And sir, midterm so, exam timing will be same as the lecture timing. Yes. So questions for practice, I will write in this document in some time, and I will upload these slides, right? So you can find the questions for practice here. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So if there is no question coming, uh, I will end this meeting. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Allah Hafiz. Uh, sir, attendance. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Attendance. Uh, sir, attendance. Yes, sir. Attendance. Allah Hafiz. Ta next class. Se pehle aapki attendance. Allah Hafiz. Okay, sir. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Allah.